Hey everybody, Thomas here. Something new and interesting for the channel today. So when you decide, what, just a few days, say six days before Christmas, seven days before Christmas, say you want to have a fireplace in your house, you just go ahead and do it. If you get a sawmill, why not? <laughs> so currently cutting black walnut, as you can see, and if you saw my video where I, oops, I screwed up a black walnut mantle or something to that effect, this is one of the log sections that my son and I pulled out of the woods with a four-wheeler. This black walnut is nasty on the outside. This is all rotten, just nasty crap right here. But the center is good, and let me tell you, it's dry. This tree had probably been down for a number of years, maybe, I don't know, five to 10 years, somewhere in that range. I'm sorry, I <clears throat> just ate breakfast, so I'm trying to digest stuff as I'm talking, but I've made a few cuts on here, and some of these cuts that are coming off are really, really beautiful. It's really, really dark wood, and I think the reason it's dark is because it sat there on the ground and seasoned kind of in place. Now, the mantle piece that we need is going to be, it's kind of small, only about five foot long. Now, this right here is, I believe, just over seven, almost eight foot long. So, I will actually have enough to do corbels as well. So, I'm going to show you the cutting of this. Now, I've already started cutting this because I actually had a customer come over today. He was really interested in seeing the sawmill. So, I said, hey, let's go ahead and run it real quick. So, he, he just thought that was cool as can be. So, I'm going to show some more cutting of this. I think that the, the nominal size we're looking for is going to be about four inches thick and as wide as I can get this. Now, I'm going to have to take off... Uh, I'm not sure which side. I'll have to look. I might have to take off this side right here because... First off, it has this big knot section right here, and it, it bells out a little more on that side. So this will be the face right here, and I want to keep it live edge. Now, I did this for a couple, a few weeks ago, where I made a black one at mantle, and I can already see. So this right here is hard. This is all soft. But what essentially I'm doing is I'm going to make a live edge with the heartwood only. There will not be any sapwood on this. So... With the help of Mr. Robert's tools, and maybe he'll come over here and we'll do something together on this, but uh, he's got this really cool wood removal bit for an angle grinder. And it's not the, the, the cheap one that you're seeing on Facebook or Amazon. You know, whatever they track, whenever I, they look at my tracking history, uh, there's a lot of wood stuff. So needless to say, I got a lot of weird wood tools and everything to pop up. But he's, I think it's called Kurtz Ball or Kurtz Ball, whatever. It's a... It sounds German. I'm going to say it's a German company and they have tungsten bits. Long story short, we're going to use that to shape this mantle. So the race is on. I don't have a watch on, but you know, time is ticking. <clears throat> so I'm going to show this as well as the inside. Now I've already actually started the inside portion and I've actually already mounted the electric fireplace that we're using. So yeah, stay tuned. Here we go. All right, folks, this is absolute pandemonium. I am literally trying to do this because our Christmas trees over here had to move all the presents out of the way all the TV and everything forward but this is what I'm actually building so I've already got the framework in this is the wood that I had that was just around the farm that was dry and literally I've used a couple species these right here are pine that is poplar the board back there is oak these are pine vertically going down you get the fireplace on the bottom I've got oak and there's more poplar and stuff back there Here's some more pine pieces right here. What we're gonna do is, I know the lighting's not the best, but the mantle top will be about this high right here. And across here, I'm gonna have where the TV mounts up. So, yeah, framework is being, you know, installed and everything. It actually is a really neat fireplace. It actually has two settings, 750 watt as well as a 1500 watt heater on there. And you can change colors and everything. It looks good. I saw this at my buddy's house. I'm like, I've got to do that. Quickly ordered on Amazon. And uh, yeah, throwing it together. So this will be an interesting build. Uh, I'm trying to get this done. Literally, I think I've got six or seven days before Christmas. And yeah, pressure's on. Also, our house is in disarray. because Christmas tree and all the presents and everything. Because I had to move everything out of the way. The carpet, everything. Push everything forward. So I need to get this done like ASAP. Here we go. All right, folks, so for the actual, I guess, exterior of the fireplace, the mantle and all that stuff, like we're building up, we'll be using these pine boards right here. Now, these pine boards, 
I've cut these months ago. These are, you know, actually these are, that's a loblolly, that's long leaf there. But as you can see, they're at half inch thickness and I planed them down on the one side. So these ones right here, I know they're really pretty and everything. And you know, it's, it's almost a crime what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna paint these. <laughs> so I've got six inchers and I've got, let's see what these ones are. I think they're like almost five. Yeah, so four and three quarters. So that's probably after shrinkage. They were probably five to start with. And these six inches are five and three quarters. So about a quarter inch of shrinkage, which means that they're good and dry. Again, I cut these probably six months ago and then uh, planed them down. So this will be the actual part that sticks out, the framework you saw there. Once I get everything ready to go, I'll put these on there and it's gonna look like shiplap. Very much similar to how I have this right here, but it'll be a lot prettier. And that right there is, is not the final, it's, it's just an exterior. And as you can see also in the shop, I've also started, that's one pine log right there. Uh, those are random one by, uh, one by whatever random width and everything, I don't really care. I'm just gonna go and do the whole wall like that uh, because all it is is just, it's another barrier between the house wrap and insulation, all that stuff. So it looks cool. I think it's gonna look good. You happy, Daniel? Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's get to work. All right, so we have the pine slats kind of put up here where my wife's gonna actually start painting on these so we can get these inside. Uh, we're gonna do a combination again of the four and three quarter and five and three quarter. We're actually gonna do the thinner ones up top on the actual fireplace kick out. And then from about the mantle down, we'll do the six inch boards. And that should be appealing to the eye. And really the main thing is, is I don't have enough six inch, or I say six inch, five and three quarter boards. So I'm gonna make do with what I have. Uh, these boards are again dry as can be. They have been planed. Uh, they have some great colors and a little bit of a, uh, I guess from the roller on the planer, but uh, these will be, go ahead and be painted up white so that it'll make the black walnut mantle pop more um, and just like be the actual you know center of attention. Also, yesterday afternoon, I got a few more boards up. So, this is two smaller pine trees. So, I'm, I'm about halfway almost to the halfway point for this one wall right here with two trees. If I would use some little bit larger ones, I'd get more, but I'm happy with this is looking. I'm not probably even gonna strip it when I come back. Now these are put up green and everything. So you can see I've got a little bit of spacing between them. Now this board's a little bit raised up because of the backing behind it, but everything else is nice and flat. But I think it's gonna look good. I'm very happy with it. All right, so now let's go over to the sawmill, do some thinking and some measuring and uh, come up with a plan. All right, folks, let me see if this will work. Hopefully the wind won't blow the camera around too much, but here we go. So, the mantelpiece, uh, I gave this some thought and everything while off camera so I don't look like an idiot on camera, but uh, there's a few things I want to incorporate in this mantle because this is our mantle and this came off our farm up in Tennessee and I just want to make this one really unique for us. So I have, you can't really see it, I have a weird knot kind of right here in the front and on this side right here I don't have as much of this material to take off. So the side closest to me is the side that I want to save. Now I'm going to take off this side right here. I've got to get a flat edge because I want to be able to butt this up against the framework that I'm building uh, so it seats flush up against there. I don't want to take off too much but I think I'm going to be close to the 8 inch you know, average this mantle sticking out. So an eight inch mantle, and I'll probably do it, hopefully the camera's not moving too much, I'll probably do it between three and three quarters to four inches thick. Probably stick with the four, but we'll see. Now, one thing to take in consideration is the overall length of the mantle, we don't need it really long. We're only looking at about five foot and some change because my wife only wants a little bit of overhang. Uh, actually, it might only be, it, it could be slightly under five foot. So long story short, uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut off this side, but I've got a bell section down here. On the back side there, it's going to stay pretty pretty flat. It would be ideal if I was to put this side down and then cut off this side because I finished working with a nice flat edge. However, 
We've got some uniqueness on this side that I want to keep. So we want to cut this side. But with this bell right here, you want to make sure your bell does not end up on your bunk. Or if it does end up on your bunk, or if you have something that, that causes it to flare up on one side, that's where our tow board really comes into effect. But I think based on the way I have this set up and where the five foot, five foot mark is about right here, this section right here leaves me material to make a corbel out of or something to that effect. And it's going to have some decent mass to it. And I'm not too worried about the fell because I can take that off with a bandsaw uh, afterward if need be. So we're going to rotate this up. My bell section here may hit on the bar for the turner. And if it does a little bit, I'm not too terribly worried about it because, again, I have toe boards and I can adjust it. So let me see if I can first roll this by hand without having to use a cant hook. Yeah, I can. Look at there. She is making contact exactly where I want her to. She's making contact on the bunk by the actual uh, framework here for the log turner. Also, on the end, step back. It's actually making contact on the bolt right here, so I've got to move the whole section towards the saw head just a little bit, if I can. There we go. And that's pretty good. I can actually bring it back just a smidge. There we go. So it's very crucial that I keep this section right here as close or on the bunks as I can because I don't want to make a lot of cuts off the top here. I need to save as much width as I can. And you can see this is a nice dark looking piece and my goodness that's pretty right there that's why you think things out because i like this better so scratch what i just did plus i see a a check down here at the end back to the drawing boards up here so <laughs> we're gonna flip this back over I want to incorporate this curl section, which means I'm going to have to take off more material here, which I'm not worried about. So you see how things change in an instant. I was dead set. I was going to incorporate this knot on this side, this, that, and the other. Then I flipped it over and saw this curl section. I've already got my width here. Oh yeah, I've already got my width here. So let's go ahead and turn the other side now. <laughs> Back to square one which means I'm going to be cutting off a lot of this bell and see that's why you look things over and you think it out now the customer for this one is me and my wife so really it's my wife to make her happy but uh, you can't just throw things on there and just wing it you can but you know you should probably think it out so I think this will be better I'm saving that that nice piece of curl where that knot is on this side. I'm getting rid of the check on this side. And yeah, it should be good. Now the only problem is, is right now I cannot physically hold this up here without putting a chalk in there. I'll just use my tape measure as a chalk, maybe. There we go. Holds up there just temporarily, but I'm very happy but I thought that over a little bit. I'll have a little more to take off on this side. Not much. This will work. So I'm going to throw in a time lapse. I'll do some cutting and do some more thinking to make sure I'm not screwing up something. Does it make sense where I have it now? I believe it does. I actually, what I might do is not on camera because. I'll do it on camera, but on time lapse. I might move the whole log forward just a little bit more. No, she's good where she's at. All right, so stay tuned. Where to go? So now let's see if I was correct in everything I wanted to do. I, 
I think I'm pretty good, but we'll see. So, the noise you hear in the background is my wife sanding down all those pine pieces. I'm just going to take this little bit off right here. Open this up. I'm hoping to see some beautiful stuff on the inside. Yep, I'm happy. Very happy the way it turned out. So, let me get this cleaned up and I'll show the camera. It's a lot of black walnut sawdust. Also, it is black walnut sawdust is toxic to horses. Uh, be very careful with the sawdust. Don't be using it for your horse stalls and stuff like that. It's uh, no bueno for equine. All right, so I do, like I said, have more material to take off. I did keep some of my curl and some more uh, figure right there, and I've got an extra knot right here. Oh. And really, I can go both sides of this look really good. I think it's going to come down to whenever I start finishing it up, choosing which side looks best. Because, to tell you the truth, this one right here has got some really cool stuff right here. And even though I turned it over to try to save some figure right here, this still may be the bottom side. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. We shall see. We shall see. Overall, though, I think this is going to be a beautiful mantle. It has some meaning for us. So, we'll do a little close-up of that. So, a lot of stuff is happening on the channel. we got a lot of new things coming. Still talking to Timber King right now to figure out what type of sawmill to do next. And, uh, I know a lot of people have been asking me, you know, what am I going to do with this one? In fact, I had a a guy who follows the channel, he's like, hey, I heard that you, say, you said you're selling your sawmill. Yes, I sold my 1400 mil, but this mill right here, if I get a new one, will go to my dad. Um, but nothing's off the table because I'm also looking at used ones. I'm looking all across the board, but I am going to stick with the Timber King family uh, just because of the year. Uh, what I, my experience is, this being my third Timber King that I have operated, and I'm about to purchase my fourth. Look at that herd of goats <laughs> uh, the goats just came up here for some weird reason but whatever so look how dark this is I mean this is extremely dark it's got a lot of good in fact these could be the shelves for the matching cabinets I'm going to build on the sides my wife wants some live edge shelves so what better to do some black one ones that came out of the same tree so here's the one side here and I like how it's nice and uniform. I like how it actually rolls in a downward direction. It doesn't protrude out on top. Now if I can turn this over. If I go with this side. I have some discoloration down here. But again, this is a section that's going to be cut off. Be cut about, I think, right there. So I do have some really cool figure right here. And some stuff down there. Now I do have, looks like a few bug holes and stuff like that. But I'm going to be taking a lot of that face off. So really... I can't make the decision yet on which side I'm going to use until I get to grinding away on it, and then we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and get this moved over. In fact, I'll probably do it on the forks of the tractor uh, over next to where my wife is working because she actually is using the uh, the saw horses and well, actually I'm using the saw horses. She's using the the stand that I'm using to uh, grind stuff on. So we'll pull over close to there and see what out. Jetty, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. I'm a stinky goat. <laughs> yeah, Annie's uh, you know, on patrol, moving them goat around, herd them up. <laughs> All right, so stay tuned. Here we go. All right, so first things first, before I start using the bit that actually is on the angle grinder, I'm going to take my draw knife and go ahead and take off much as much material as I can. Now I'll put this in the time lapse, but uh, I did a little bit right here. It got me down to the, the hardwood, or the heartwood, excuse me, and uh, we'll go from there. My wife is going over and uh, sanding all these pieces right here. This is going to be 
all the, I guess the vertical portion going up the chimney, if you want to call it that way. So let me get to work on this, the one a time lapse, and then I'll show you the tool that Mr. Roberts let me borrow. It's it's pretty aggressive. Stand by. So I think we are pretty happy with this turned out. So this is gonna be the front face right here. Uh, this little bulge section is close to the center, but not exact or anything. But everything I think balances out pretty well. And I think it's gonna look good. I have an average of eight inches across the entire face. And right here it bumps out to about nine and a quarter inches. The pith. Is slightly low on this side right here on the opposite side the pit is slightly low and back but uh, I don't think I'm really gonna have too much of an issue with checking but even if I do I'm not too worried about it this is this is something unique for the house and I, I think we're gonna be very happy with this now this is the bottom side here I was initially gonna try to incorporate this into uh, the mantle but that was not working so it's okay now my end pieces here, uh, I'll make those probably into the corbel sections underneath of it. In fact, probably that piece right there will do everything. I may not even have to use the piece down there that I cut off. But the Sasquatch uh, did phenomenal. It was slightly more than what it could do in one pass. I'm just over, well on here it shows it so it's right at four inches, but it was I should cut four inches. I don't know. Long story short, it didn't. I had to come back and trim it just a little bit, but you can see, I mean, you can't even feel that. You can kind of see the difference, but I came back with my uh, my cordless circo saw. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm still gonna do a lot of sanding on this. I was gonna use Mr. Roberts' tool, and I still might, but to tell you the truth, that draw knife did a dang, dang good job on cleaning this up. I mean, I don't, I mean, I can run my hand across this without the threat of getting a splinter, so I may not use Robert's tool. Or maybe I'll use it on the corbels. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I'll have to use it somewhere in this video, or at least show you what it looks like here in a second. But yeah, this is gonna look good. We have a mantle now. Now we just gotta get everything else put up and then get this mounted. So weight-wise, I don't think, I think we're under, probably 80 pounds for the whole thing, not too bad. So again, cut exactly at five foot, we actually probably have to trim off a smidge more, or we might leave it the way it is. We're gonna put it up there and see what it looks like. Uh, I'm going to sand this down pretty well, oil it up, and the oil will actually help to prevent it from checking. So if you watch some other folks who build timber frame homes and stuff like that, they use this oil, in fact, one of them I think is like a blueberry type scent or something like that. But anyways, the oil will help to keep it from checking and it'll dry kind of in place. And I'm, I'm totally cool with that. All right, so stay tuned. All right, so I've spoken with the wife and she agrees. That draw knife did a really good job. We're actually just going to sand the face of this and kind of leave it as is. And what it does, as you'll see some marks from the draw knife itself, but uh, not too bad. Now this is one that she got me for Christmas last year, I believe. And I've got a little bit of rust on there because I keep it around the sawmill. It's an antique draw knife. Uh, can't see the name of it anymore, but it's up here at the top. But uh, anyways, long story short, uh, it, she wants to keep the knife marks in it. It does give it that rustic feel. And we're both liking the way this is looking. So. She's gonna sand some more on this. I'm gonna start looking at these corbels and see what I can do, uh, how I'm gonna orient orient them. And uh, actually the good thing is, is these forks on the tractor are roughly, I can spread them out to make them about the size that I wanna do the corbels. So perfect, we can see it in, in place. So here we go. All right, folks, we've been making some great progress inside. 
But this right here is the actual mantelpiece. Now, needless to say, I've been standing on this for a long, long time. Uh, the bottom section, I've only taken down to, like, I think 80 grit is what I took this down to. Uh, not too terribly worried about that. And then I did flare the, the sides here with uh, 220. This top portion right here, this is the section that I ran the uh, draw knife across. And I like, oh my goodness, this is like super, super smooth. Took that down to 220 right there. And I mean, it is looking great. That's going to be the, the front face of the mantle. And I'm very happy with the way it looks. It's got some differing uh, colors in there. And it has a few tool marks here and there. But, you know, that actually, I think, adds character to it. And, man, this is smooth. I really worked on that front face there for a while. And then the top side right here, that, again, was taken down to 220. Uh, I was going to try to run this through the planer uh, based on the weight of this. I didn't think the planer would actually pull it through my little DeWalt here. Now, my planer up in Tennessee would have handled no problem, but a little DeWalt, I think I was, I was going to run into more issues than not. So I start with a 40 grit on the belt sander, then 60 grit with the orbital, 80, 120, and then 220. And I still have a few tool marks in there from when I was running that 40 grit, pretty heavy. But I actually like the way those look. Again, keeping a little bit of a rustic look. The ends, I sanded those down too, so they're nice and flush. Everything looks great. So, yes, this is green if you want to call it that uh, it had been on the, on the ground for many years but i'm not really too worried about any kind of checking or anything like that i'm going to go ahead and oil it as it is and if it does do something crazy and check apart or cup or do something i don't think it's going to cup it, it might twist but if it does that you know i know a guy <laughs> i'll just i'll just cut something again uh, i think this will actually stay the way i want to keep it so i'm going to go ahead and apply some Howard's butcher block conditioner to this and I think actually keeping the oil on it and working that will actually keep it from checking a whole lot I think it's going to help to yes let it dry in place but not let it dry too fast where it's going to just bust the ends all to pieces and this is a little bit longer than my, what my wife wanted we're at five foot right now four seven is about what we need so again if need be if it does check too much I could possibly come back and take off you know, inch and a half off either end. But I really don't think it's going to. I think this is gonna be a really nice piece. If I keep the oil added to it, uh, it'll dry in place and we'll enjoy this for, for the years to come. All right, so stay tuned, here we go. We're gonna make this already beautiful black walnut mantle even more beautiful. So Howard's Butcher Block Conditioner. I could also use feed and wax, but I don't wanna add any extra colors to this. I wanna keep it as natural as possible as long as get a rifle or something sighted in over there oh yeah wait till i get that face uh on the face of the camera there but uh, this is gorgeous just imagine like a just a beautiful rifle stock absolutely gorgeous yeah I'm very happy finally we're gonna have one of them fancy folk mantle black walnut <laughs> right, that's just beautiful I'm gonna apply a whole lot I got it sitting here in the sun it'll warm up on there really gonna just soak in. I'll apply two coats before I bring it inside. And since it's a, just a you know an, a an oil with some waxes and some stuff in it because this is literally I think it's carnival wax, mineral oil and beeswax. And just look at that transition. It just really makes this wood pop. But uh Reapplication is just as easy as this. You know, I'm not going to really use any cleaners or anything on it. I'm just going to reapply. And you know, if I really wanted to, I could have put a first coat of mineral oil on here, but I'm not too worried about that. I use the good stuff for 
all the coats I'm going to put on this. I might even put a third coat once I let this really seep, seep in. That does look beautiful. I mean, that's stupid beautiful. I mean, all the little knots and everything, everything just pops out. And when you're doing this, you got to make sure you get the end grain real heavy because, you know, wood dries from the end grain. I want to make sure that I get a lot on there because it'll dry in place, but it will, uh, It'll dry nice and slow. We want to keep it as a controlled drying process. I know there's probably some people like cringing like, oh my goodness, he's using a green piece of wood. But again, I'm, I mean, if it messes up, I can just go cut another one, turn this into something else. I mean, it doesn't hurt my feelings. And I can probably just salvage this piece too. There's no way to apply. So now you can see kind of that front face there. Apply all sides. Now on the bottom here, it's probably going to soak up a little bit more. Because first off, I didn't sand it as much. Down here, I also have some... Not soft, but not the hardest. <laughs> I'll have to go get some more butcher block conditioner too, because... Today I also have to make, I had a guy put in an order for five Mississippi state cutout cutting boards. So I have to work on that too. We're going to get a lot more of this. But yeah, this is pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. And then down here on this side, I'll show the camera on this in a second. It's got uh, some medullary rays because this right here, is essentially really close to the pit so straight grain quarter sawn area if you want to call it that it's beautiful I mean got one of them rich people mantles <laughs> uh, that's all funny yeah I hope you all enjoy the channel this is uh, a lot of fun I like to document stuff along the way I've got um, a lot of new stuff coming out. I just posted a video, and you know, not so much for my normal subscribers, but I like to post videos that you know help people in the purchase of equipment. So I just posted a video about my mom's new John Deere Gator she bought. Funny thing is, she calls it Wally. <laughs> she named it, but uh, she loves that thing. And it's not a speed demon, like I've said. If you watch the video, it's not a speed demon by any stretch of the means, but. It's a great vehicle for her and my dad. It's just it's an easy going side by side. Uh, the neighbors down the road have one very similar to it. And it's going to be perfect for my parents on the farm. My wife and I, we've got the Kubota. And it's kind of like a dual purpose one. It could be one for riding the trails. We go over to the neighbor's house and ride over there so often. Mostly we just take it for deer hunting and uh, around the farm here really nice when my wife can use it to take uh, Christmas decorations, Thanksgiving decorations to and from the house to the conics box. Really, you know, helpful for that. Also, of course, the reason we've got it for is moving goat feed around. But then as soon as we got it, we move the goat feeding to the front. So <laughs> we don't do as much moving a goat feed around with as we used as we used to when we first got it but eh it all works out it's it's a great farm vehicle and the kids love it they love to go riding we'll go like i said over to the neighbor's house stuff like that but yeah uh nothing fancy i'm just again heavily coating this with uh as much as i can on there let it soak in this air right here is going to soak in the most because I've got some open grain. Hi, Daddy. Tommy, don't be breaking that. Hi, Dad. Hey. Yeah, Tommy's over there. Yeah, breaking up the ground. No, this is uh, uh, just oil. Oh, yeah, there's oil in it. But that looks pretty good right there. 
Yeah. All right. I'm trying to show you what this side looks like. So, I got one little hole right here. Not too bad. But then down here, this is a section that's really soaking in because I, I had a little bit of soft sapwood right there. I don't want to take too much off because I need to keep that back as straight as I can. And with that being on the back side, I don't think it's really going to be an issue. Now, when I was talking about that, this medullary rays, uh, let's see if you can see it. You can see a little bit of them in there. Just beautiful, though. And I, as you can see, I went heavy, but that's real pretty. Really pretty. And that's the bottom side. <laughs> so let's go ahead and flip this up a little bit. I have all sorts of excess all over the place, but that's fine. It's like a slippery baby. If you've ever had to wash a baby in, a, in the bathtub or in the sink, <laughs> all soaked up and everything yeah that's what <laughs> this is kind of hard to move around right now it's funny but it's sad because our little katie she's getting to be where she ain't a baby no more so she's getting to be a toddler now so <laughs> kids are all growing up but our motto is four and no more we are happy with four <laughs> love them to death but they do keep me thank goodness we had Kids when we were relatively young. Er. <laughs> yeah. Pull your butt out. All right. So I know this is not all people like to watch people apply essentially oil to a mantle, but I hope y'all enjoyed this. This is uh, gonna be our mantle. Came off our farm from Tennessee, and now it's on our farm here in Mississippi. Do a nice close up. I mean, that is absolutely gorgeous. Very happy the way this mantelpiece turned out. And again, that top edge, or the front edge, I should say. So I'm going to let it sit out here in the sun for a little while and go from there. But yeah, and then I'll show you all inside too here in a bit. Uh, we've been putting up the slats that my wife painted and uh yeah we're moving right along very happy stay tuned all right folks so the tv is mounted these are the boards my wife was working on we've painted the sides we've got these boards on the front i've mounted my corbels and these are just some of the off cuts on the sides or anything and that is beefy beefy get the fireplace in there and Next step, I want to put the mantle across, and then I've got to do a little trim work with some boards here on the side, um, and then we're actually going to transition to a wider board. So these are the, what, four and three quarter inch boards. We're going to move to the five and three quarter inch boards from there down. Um, it's coming together. I'm, I'm happy with it's looking, and we'll see what that bottom board is. I have no idea of measurements, but that's a good thing about having... You know, essentially, table saw and sawmill, we can make the measurements whatever we want to. So thus far, it's looking pretty good. Can't wait to get the house put back together so it's in full disarray. But uh, mantle coming on here shortly, and we'll go from there. All right, folks, so we've got the backer boards up. We've got the TV on. We've got the mantle going, and we've got a few more measurements to take and everything, but we are getting really close. The black walnut mantle looks phenomenal. The corbels and everything turned out perfectly well. That sucker is on there. It is not coming off. Uh, absolute pandemonium trying to get the tree and everything. <laughs> but uh, how about how about this? Who can tell me who is that on the TV? <laughs> I was some, some weird stuff on YouTube. But if you know uh, who that guy is and everything, uh, comment below and we'll see who gets it right. But anyways, um, yeah, the mantle is really turning out very well. Uh, I think it's going to be a magnificent centerpiece here also with all the framework right here or the, not the framework with all the uh, extension cords um, I'm actually gonna drill holes in behind which I've already shown I'm gonna put a hole right there and I've got one for the network cable on the other side will be somewhere back in there as well but uh, the mantle just I mean, doesn't that look just amazing and behind here 
you know, to keep it clean, we're going to have cables going through the backside here. Uh, it's going to plug in to this power strip on the inside, and the power strip is plugged in right there. So everything will be nice, clean, and hidden. And then on the sides, now this is going to take some time. This is going to be a, uh, you know, something that goes on for a while. We're going to do shelves on either side of this with matching black walnut live edge. So walls will probably be painted white, or I'll probably do the same thing, this shiplap look behind it, and then do the shelves. I think it's really going to make this section of the house really pop. You know, it's complete pandemonium. I got DVDs, got the, every, everything's just in the way. Just got a presence all over the house, wrapped up. But uh, yeah, it's really coming together. Stay tuned. All right, folks. So the mantle is in, fireplace is in. The only thing we're lacking is a board down here at the bottom. And then if you look, my little trim piece is one right there, and there's one on the other side. But uh, pretty happy the way this has turned out. Uh, we've got a, one more coat to do on the side over here on the, the side. And then, uh, like I spoke to before, we are going to add some uh, live edge you know, shelving on either side. But I'm pretty happy the way this turned out. This mantle looks great. I mean, it's just beautiful if you look at the uh you know it's got a nice sheen to it and everything just beautiful black walnut mantle that means something because it came off our farm in tennessee the corbels that were made those are again cut off from the end pieces and then the fireplace works great again i got this fireplace off of amazon i'll see if i can put a link in the description but it was a, a cyber monday deal uh, working pretty pretty well so I'm happy. It's, it's uh, a good addition. Now I can put this living room back in order. Uh, I, now on the bottom down here, I don't know if we're going to put like a hearth piece out of wood or if I'm just going to put the board like what I have there. So decisions, decisions. Now the cords for the TV, I got to mount uh, for the TV's mount on the wall and everything, but the cords go through the backside and then behind this fireplace, actually inside there, is actually a... Um, surge protector and that surge protector then comes out down here at the bottom and plugs into an outlet over here i have the tv on wireless mode right now and it's great but if i had to put a network cable i'll have to fish everything through the inside there which is kind of difficult because i didn't leave myself a lot of room <laughs> but there's enough room to get the uh power cable now for the the cable box and stuff like that well we're, we're going to be cutting the cable anyway so that should not be an issue we're just going to be stick strictly on I guess internet for TV. <laughs> All right, so I hope you all enjoy this, but I am very happy. I'll get my little last pieces in here and I'll throw maybe a photo at the end, but very happy with this turned out. Well, folks, the fireplace is complete. Are you happy with it, Evelyn? Yeah. And you can change different color flames or anything well, on there. No one could do that. Yeah. When we first got it does have a uh, 750 watt as well as 1500 watt heater and I still have to figure out what to do with all this stuff here but overall very happily happy with the way that this mantle turned out uh, it's a perfect height for we can actually you know a Christmas tree <laughs> we can put the uh, stockings and everything next to it um, now we do have to do some organization here that's gonna be going away uh, when a tree's down I'll be working on my black walnut shelves on either side the live edge or anything and we'll have some storage underneath. That way I can actually take the cable boxes and, and stuff like that and put them where people can't see them. But I'm very happy with a clean look. Uh, you can't see any cables and everything on the TV. Overall, it took about, you know, three days uh, really to get this thing cleaned up. Put together, I've got little trim pieces right there on either side that I still have to do. But that's that's easy. But... For all intents and purposes, you can see a completed black walnut mantle in our house. So, very happy with this. And, uh, yep, there we go. It's a little size comparison. I think it'll be perfect. All right. Thanks, y'all. See you around.